Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are gonna start off where we left in the last video. We still have a lot of work to do on the truck, so let's get to it. All right, we're back here for the next day. As you can see, we went ahead and threw the intake on. Come up, we actually have the intake all the way back where it needs to be. To do this, we bent the heater core inlet and outlet. So to do that, we just took a small pair of vice grips, put them in on this outer edge and bent them towards the other direction. So same thing on this one. As you can see, we have a small kink on the larger diameter one. We don't have any kinks that we can see on the small one. So that actually worked out quite well. Um, we are still hitting the intake here and here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Dremel and I'm gonna trim this down a little. I think we're gonna bend this larger inlet or outlet more out so that we have a little bit more clearance. And then we might move this one a little bit more, the smaller diameter one. But I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down so that we have all our clearance and that will get us one step closer to putting this intake on. I just got done doing all the trimming and as you can see, I have freed up quite a bit of room. We are still going to bend this one out a little more because it is touching. I believe if we bend it out a little bit more, that'll one, match it with this angle of this uh, pipe and two, it will get it off the intake. As you can see though, I freed up a ton of room up here taking off these ribs and that just made it very clean. We're still gonna have a little bit of an issue with the wiring harness, I think, but overall, uh, it has created a ton of room, uh, much needed room at that. And I will still be able to use the stock heater core uh, in this location without having to remove it and replace it with one and modify the lines before that. What I will be doing and suggesting is to put the hoses on, if you're gonna do this, obviously. Put the hoses on before you put the intake on. That's what I'm gonna end up doing. I have the hoses on order. I will get those, mainly this one. This one won't be as bad, but the small one here, that one's gonna be the rough one. I'm gonna put it on before the intake and just have it loose out. And then we will put the intake in after that and once we get a few more things done. Overall with this portion, I am very happy with the fitment. I didn't want to go too far on the flange. I didn't want to get all the way to the material thickness on the intake, or not the material thickness, but the outside shell of the intake. And yeah, I mean, I, I can't ask for much better fitment now than what it is. Okay, so I changed my plan. I was gonna bolt this trans dipstick mount on for the last time, but I almost forgot I plan on powder coating both the trans mount and the fuse box mount. So I went ahead, took both of them off. I'm gonna get them prepped. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, make it look a little nicer. Again, these parts are gonna be black and they're gonna be in the back of the engine bay. So they're gonna be hard to see. So you won't really notice all the detail on it, but I would like to clean it up a little bit and get all the sharp edges off and just make it look a little nicer overall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I will powder coat those. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and skip all that. You guys have seen me powder coat before. If not, go check out the powder coating videos. They're pretty cool. It's a cool system and I enjoy it. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get these done. As you guys can see, I have finished powder coating the brackets and they turned out really good. I have the flashlight on it right now so you can see it. This is what it looks like in the sun, which this is in the engine bay so you, it won't see a whole lot of sun. So it'll just look more like that black, but it's the same color I'm doing everything else in as far as a kind of a sparkle black and I like it. It's pretty discreet in the shade, but shiny in the light. So while these components will be hidden, I wanted to do it and I like it. So now that they're done, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. As you can see, I have the secondary fuse box mount on. You can really only see that bottom section there. I do have the light shining on it, so it is a little bit more reflective than what it would normally be. If I take the light away, you know, it just looks black. Same thing over here. I have the trans dipstick mounted. I have the P-clamp in as well. So that is good to go. Let me set the light down. There. There we go, got the light set down, comes out, goes in, everything works good. I am very happy with how the mount turned out. 
can see it's all mounted in there. I also am using it as a channel for the harness, for the engine harness. And I have to say, it works out pretty well. I like it. I have my big P-clamp on for the harness to keep it in the back of the bay. And everything is coming together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try getting this passenger side header on. I did get stainless steel bolts and I'm going into an aluminum head. So I'm going to use a little dab of anti-seize on it just so they don't gnaw. But other than that, it is ready to go on. And then after that, I can put my steering shaft back on. I took it off because of this clearancing issue trying to get the header in. Hopefully we don't have any more clearance issues. I haven't had the head fully on and then tried putting the steering shaft on. So we will see if there's any more issues. Hopefully not. And hopefully it all works out, but we will see. As you can see, guys, I'm under the truck. I have the header on and looking at it where the collector pipe comes out of the header is going to go into where the oil filter does. I just put the collector on. You can see where the V-band goes. The collector is very, very close to fitting, but not quite. We're going to have to hammer it a little so that we can get it to fit around where the oil filter goes. But other than that, not too bad. Go up top. I will show you what other issues we have. All right, we're back up top and you can see the headers are bolted. They're loosely bolted. I don't have them tight yet because I thought maybe if we need to take it out, then you don't want to go ahead and go through the troubles of torquing it just because of how difficult it is to get to the rear bolts. But I have the steering shaft in here and I don't have the steering gearbox quite lined up. As you can see, the steering shaft is slightly off center of where the gear is and that's because it's hitting the header right there and this is on the thin side of the steering shaft the steering shaft is a uh, round and long it's basically like a rectangle with the short edges being round so we're on the short side so that means the long side is going to hit even more than that we're going to have to hammer the exhaust pipe in on the first cylinder and possibly the third depending on how close that gets i have a feeling we're going to have to give it a little bit of a clearancing tap on that third cylinder exhaust pipe. But, I mean, it is what it is. We gotta make it work. It really doesn't affect the airflow of the engine, giving it a, some taps that's been tested before. And yeah, so that's just what we're gonna have to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and end it for the day. So I will see you tomorrow. Okay guys, we're back. It has been a few days. I haven't really worked on the truck much, but um, we're, I left off with the same issue where the steering shaft is interfering with the header. So I went ahead and marked it with a little dot with the Sharpie on the header. You won't be able to see it from this angle, but that is where the contact is with the header. I will be taking a hammer and uh, gently tapping on the header. Once I pull it out, I gotta pull it out to do this. I don't wanna crack the welds or anything or have anything happen in the block or the gasket, but I'll take it out and I will gently uh, manipulate the header, get it to where there's more clearance around this steering shaft. This will not really affect the performance of the engine, if at all. There's videos online where people have dented the headers and compared it to undented headers on an uh, engine dyno, and there has been no difference in performance, and if there is, it's so minimal you won't even notice it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go that route and get this to work. I might have to come to this third cylinder. We'll see, I'm gonna work on this first one first and uh, play by ear, see how it goes, and see what I can do. Okay guys, you can't really see in there that good actually at all, but I have clearanced it out quite a bit. Um, yeah, it's hard to see. You might be able to see from this angle. It's a little dark, but I was able to clearance it out. I had the sh uh, steering shaft on. Everything worked. I had some clearance and then I took it out and just made even more clearance just to make sure if this header expands or contracts, I will be good on all my bases, covered on all my bases, I should say. Um, I'm not going to bolt this in today because I need to get more heat shielding for this loom and for the wiring running here. It's going to be running close to the headers and I want to make sure that's all protected. It's going to be a lot easier to access that with the headers out. I just have them in there uh, as a placeholder for now. So I'm going to order heat shielding. I'm going to 
then get the headers in, get the spark plugs in. I'll be able to put the steering shaft back in. I got to order a new temp sensor because I broke this one, which I probably needed to get a new one anyway. I'll order an AC Delco, get that in. Um, then I can start getting the coils on, get everything situated on this side, start working on the other side. My dad already did some clearancing on the headers on this side to get them to fit better. And, uh, Everything's starting to look good. We are going to have some clearancing issues possibly on the exit side underneath the truck. We're going to have to figure out. Same thing on this side. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, and take it from there. So, yeah, this is where I'm going to wrap up for the day while I get these parts on order. Hey, guys, I got started today already. I have received the heat wrap that I said that I ordered. As you can see, it's on the wiring harness right here up until the bottom of the oil pan and it goes all the way up around the brake lines. I'll go up to the top side so you can see kind of what it looks like from there, but now that I have that on, I should be able to put the headers on. Now that we're on the top side, you can see where I started. I started at this clip, which the header comes out right here and goes back, so that's kind of perfect on where it is. And then I just have it running straight with the wiring down to the rear. There is a split on the harness here, so I did have to cut some of the heat wrap uh, to allow for that to come out. But it worked out pretty well. It still protects all the wires pretty well, and everything looks really good. It came out a lot cleaner than I was expecting it to. I got the three-quarter inch sizing on this, and it worked out very well. It fit perfect. The heat shielding I got looks like this. It is flat. It came in a big roll. It's got Velcro on both sides, as you can see. This is the inside. It's more of that Kevlar material, the exhaust wrap material, and then the outside is the reflective side. And all you do is you fold over the Velcro like this around your wiring, and then Velcro it down, and that's what you get. Um, I didn't get a specific brand of this or anything. I just found what was on Amazon and got it, and it looks like it'll work out very well. It feels pretty good quality. If you wanna pick this up, I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description for you guys. But yeah, that's the exhaust heat shielding I used. And no, I'm not sponsored by anyone or anything. I just picked up what I thought would work the best, and um, this suited my needs very well, and it worked out well. So yeah, let's go ahead and get the headers installed on the truck. All right, the headers are fully on. I have all the bolts torqued down to the specified torque rating. It was 132 inch pounds for stage one and then stage two was 15 foot pounds. So remember the 132 inch pounds, 15 foot pounds. There's a big difference when you go into those units. So yeah, um, it's on. Next is to get the steering shaft on. Also, just to let you guys know, to get those rear bolts tightened, I did have to uh, come through this fender well. Also, we'll probably end up putting the spark plugs in now, just because it's going to be easier now going through here than it will be with the steering shaft on. So, I thought I'd let you guys know that beforehand. Okay guys, my camera's about to die, but I have the headers in all completely installed with the spark plugs. I believe I said that before. And here you can see I have the steering shaft in and everything fits. That is fully bolted in. I have the, I have blue Loctite on the set screw there. Everything is good, everything's lined up. I realigned it to make sure that the wheels are pointed straight and everything. We have all our clearancing in there and everything looks really good. It's hard to see that clearancing, but it is there. We have the heat wrap on the wires that's going through. I might need to check the clearance between the heat wrap and the set screw on the big knuckle there on the steering shaft, but Everything is coming together. I now have full steering of the truck. The header on the driver's side is fully in and everything looks really good and is coming together quite nicely. Okay, working on the truck again. Got the headers and the steering shaft on last time. Now I am working to put this driver's side coils on. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and start doing.
As you guys can see, I have the coils on on the driver's side. They look good. All the powder coat matches. You got the black sparkle powder coat like what I did for the fuse box bracket and the transmission filler hose bracket. It looks good. You can't... I mean, I mean, it looks pretty discreet here. It's black with some silver flake is what it looks like, so not too bad. I am happy with how it came out. Steering shaft and everything's in. We got our clearance with the headers, and everything looks good. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.